All right, I'm Brother James. I greet you one more time in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We are about to enter into the second half of the 22 chapters of the book of Revelation. Chapter 12 through 17, in, in this section, we focus less on the outward events and conflicts and bring into sharper focus the inward, unseen, supernatural forces that operate and control the dramatic happenings of the end times. This chapter, Revelation 12, is, is parenthetic. It gives us in symbolical language a rapid history of the Jews from the birth of Christ to the Great Tribulation. It ignores, except by implication, the church era, the Christian era. It's a question of the Jew in relation to Christ. Let's read some of these verses. Uh, Revelation 12, 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Now you've probably seen statues of a woman alleging to be this woman in churches in our land or yours. You have probably seen a religion that exalts a woman above her son, and they, they crown her, they place planets beneath her feet, they, uh, they try their very best to capture the essence of this woman and, and morph her or transform her into... Mary, uh, someone they call the Virgin Mary, which couldn't be the Mary of the Bible. She hasn't been a virgin for 2,000 years. But what, what causes all of that theoretical interpretation to come crashing down is the fact that Revelation 12, 6 says, and the woman, the same woman you read about in verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God, and there they should feed her a thousand two hundred and threescore days. This woman who gives birth to Jesus Christ, the man who will rule and reign on the earth, this woman is present to give birth to Christ, and then she is present in the time when she must flee to the wilderness and she is alive to flee into the wilderness and find a hiding place and a place of refuge for three and one-half years. Now, unless, unless, the tales told of Mary have not yet expanded to the place where we're going to teach that she's been alive for 2,000 years and that she will flee from Jerusalem in the middle of the tribulation, this woman is not Mary, the Virgin Mary, or any other Mary. When the Bible says, I saw a woman clothed in the sun, this can be none other, comparing Scripture with Scripture, none other than the nation of Israel. She's looked at as poor, broken, and conquered, not as in her actual condition. For at the time of the birth of Christ, she was a tributary to Rome. She is seen as what God intends her to be and what she will be in a future day. Now, this matter of the sun, 
Uh, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. This speaks of supreme authority, this clothing with the sun. And take a look, please, in Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 13. We'll show you the Bible uh, support for this idea. And the Lord shall make thee, he's speaking to the nation of Israel in the context, the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So there's the headship, the son position promised to the nation of Israel. The moon under her feet tells of complete delegated authority, for all authority in this world is delegated, and the crown of 12 stars not only identifies the tribes of the Hebrews, but that there are all 12 of them present speaks of full administrative power. Now, Pollock in his uh, commentary suggests that as the stars of Revelation 1 are angelic overseers of the churches, so the stars here point to 12 apostles and their oversight of the 12 tribes of Israel during the kingdom age. It's, it's an interesting thought, but it's, it's, it's not so. And, and just stay with us. We've got a lot of ground to cover. And the verse begins with and. In case you're wondering, this word occurs 1,174 times in the book of Revelation. Of the 404 verses in Revelation, all but 31 use the word and. 275 of the 404 verses begin with the word and. Five chapters, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 have all but one verse beginning with and, meaning this is, this is quite the unified setting forth of truth. You can't separate it one, one part from the other. And great, a great wonder in heaven. The word great is used five times in this chapter. Now, as to this great wonder in heaven, we, we've already stated, and some are already prepared to contend, but we have said that this refers to God's thoughts of Israel. I want you to turn to Jeremiah 4, or watch as I turn to Jeremiah 4. I'll do it for you. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse number 31. Jeremiah 4, 31. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, that bewaileth herself, that spreadeth her hands, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is weary because of murderers. And in Isaiah 66, the last chapter of Isaiah, and verse number uh, five, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a child who hath heard such a thing, who hath seen such a thing. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in a day, in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So uh, this great tribulation time, speaking of that woman in travail, and that woman speaking of the nation of Israel, it's all interconnected. By the way, there are four women referred to in Revelation. Can you name them? Jezebel, chapter 2, verse 20. Israel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. The harlot, chapter 17, verse 1. And the bride, 
chapter 19, verses 7 and 8. Now, this woman here in Revelation 12, 1, is not in heaven, but on earth. Look at verse uh, 12. It says, um, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. And verse 13, persecuted the woman. Verse 14, to the, to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. She might fly into the wilderness, into her place. And we already read the sixth verse where that place is prepared for the woman. She's, she's an earthly people. She represents an earthly personage. Now, Israel is the mother of the Messiah. And I'll show you that in the Bible. Uh, in, in three places or four, Israel being the mother of Messiah, Isaiah chapter 9, very familiar portion of Scripture, Isaiah 9. And verse number 6, Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government should be upon his shoulder, and his name should be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent word in to Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. So there is, there is coming one, according to Isaiah 9, who would be a son born, who is the mighty God. And that, that is the birth of Jesus Christ at Bethlehem. And then the second coming is also in view because the government, an endless government, should be upon his shoulder. Now, this reference to the birth of Messiah doesn't say unto Mary is born or unto the virgin is born or unto a, a woman in Bethlehem is born, but unto us. It's a national matter. Messiah coming into the world is something that was, that was wrought by and made possible by through the nation of Israel. Micah chapter 4. Book of Micah and chapter 4. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. There we go. Micah 4 and verse number 10. Micah 4.10. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered, and there the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Chapter 5, verse uh, number 1. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been of old, uh, from old, from, <laughs> let me get it right, have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. So again, both comings in view, the birth at Bethlehem, and then the long absence, and then the time of travail, the time when this woman is, tra is travailing, here comes the man-child with salvation to deliver them. In Romans 9, Romans chapter 9 and verse number 5 says, Whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. So verse 4, who are Israelites? Verse 5, of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. So Israel as a nation 
is said to be the mother of the means whereby Messiah has come into the world and will come into the world. The Holy Spirit warns us that we're about to receive the description of a great wonder from which we gather that what is actually seen is a representation of something else. There's a bewildering variety of interpretation when it comes to identifying the woman and her child, and, and uh, let me give you some. The woman is interpreted as being Mary. Now, if you, if you were raised a, in a Bible-believing church, in a Christian church, you know her as Mary. If you were raised in a Roman Catholic religion, maybe an Orthodox religion, Greek Orthodox religion, uh, you know her, you know her, you've heard her referred to as the Virgin Mary, and we'll not, we'll not stray too far from our uh, course here today, but you, you do understand, if you have a Holy Bible, the modern versions will remove words and phrases and verses to obscure the truth, but the, the Holy Bible says that Mary brought forth her firstborn son, that was Jesus. And the Bible says that Joseph knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son. The Bible doesn't say Joseph never knew her. The Bible makes clear that she was a virgin until the time that Jesus Christ was born. Then she and Joseph, his husband and wife, began normal married relations, and in fact, the Bible names brothers of Jesus and tells us that he was part of a, a rather good-sized family. And the Scripture also tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that if Mary remained a virgin after she married Joseph, that she was sinning against the Word of God and the commandments of the Lord. Oh, where's that? I want to find that one. I, I, I thought some of you would. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. So we refer to Mary as the Bible refers to her, Mary. And we never call her what the Bible never calls her, the Virgin Mary or the Virgin or the Blessed Virgin or Holy Mother, and we certainly, certainly would never refer to her as the mother of God because God had no beginning, no birth. God has no superior. In Mary's womb was formed a holy thing in which the Son, the Word, was made flesh and dwelt among us. But anyway, the problems with referring to the woman of Revelation 12 as Mary are eightfold. Satan did not attempt to destroy the child as soon as it was born, but two years later. So the Bible says in Revelation 12:4 uh, that he was ready to devour her child as soon as it was born, and that is not true of the birth of baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Second, Mary did not flee into the wilderness in Matthew or Mark or Luke or John. As verses 6 and 14 of Revelation 12 says, this woman does, Mary fled into Egypt. And no one who's read the book of Exodus could possibly mistake Egypt for the wilderness or the wilderness for Egypt. Third, the child was not caught up to heaven while Mary was in the wilderness of Egypt. Jesus didn't ascend up to his father when he was two years old for safekeeping and then come back down to earth. But in verse number five, the Bible says here, she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So Jesus Christ is born. He came unto his own. His own received him not. He's the king of the Jews. He's the, the Hebrew Messiah. But he ascended back to heaven, and, he, and there he sits waiting for the day when he will return to this earth. It's, not, it's the same person, but it's not baby Jesus we're talking about. It's resurrected Jesus. 
Number four, Mary did not bring forth the ruler with the rod of iron. Verse five says that her child would uh, was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and he certainly will. But not in Mary's lifetime. She brought forth a savior. Number five, there's no evidence Mary was in Egypt for three and a half years. This woman will be in her wilderness hiding place for three and one half years. Number six, the dragon did not persecute Mary. Revelation 12, 13 says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Can't, can't be the Mary of Matthew through Acts. Number seven, the dragon did not make war with Mary's other children. But Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Number eight, Mary has never worn a crown. This woman is crowned. And when she gets one, she will cast it before the throne according to Revelation 4 and verse number 10. The woman is also interpreted quite frequently as being the church. Well, there's huge problems with that idea. First, Mary did not give birth to the church. Second, the church was born out of Jesus' sufferings, not Mary's. Third, the church does not rule all nations with a rod of iron. Fourth, part of her child is caught up to God and to his throne, verse 5, and she and the remnant of her seed are left to be persecuted, verse 17. This cannot be the one indivisible body of Christ. Number five, the church has never fled into the wilderness, and, and if it did, there'd be no place prepared for it by God in that, in that place, in that wilderness. Jesus didn't say go hide in the wilderness. He said go into all the world and preach the gospel to his church. Number six, there is no three-and-a-half-year time period connected with the church as there is with this woman. And then as we read earlier, number seven, according to Romans 9, verses four and five, Christ came out of Israel. The church did not produce Christ, but Christ produced the church. Some holiness groups have taught that the woman is, a, is the professing church and the man-child represents a class of overcomers who are good enough to escape the tribulation. Again, the Bible doesn't say in 1 Thessalonians 4, you get raptured if you believe that Jesus died and rose again and you're good enough. The Bible says you're called up to meet the Lord if you believe Christ died and rose again and you've put your faith and trust in him. Out you go. The woman is actually held by some, and in this day and time, you've probably not heard this because the group is really uh, fizzled out. But the woman is held by some to be Mary Baker, Glover, Patterson, Eddie. Yes, this woman was, <laughs> was so deluded as to teach that she, she taught that this woman represented her and that the man child she brought forth was the Christian science religion and that the dragon is the mortal mind trying to destroy her new religion. I don't think we even need to comment on something that far-fetched. Now, Revelation 12, 1 says, In heaven, a woman. The sign appears in heaven, not because the woman is actually there, but because she is seen according to the mind of God toward her. That she's clothed in the sun, reveals that her glory will be manifest through and only through the second advent of the Messiah. You remember those verses we read? Malachi 4, Isaiah 60, 
2 Samuel 23, Psalm 19, that sun rise has to do with the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it is only then that the promised kingdom and the manifest earthly glory of Israel will, will be on full display. And with the moon under her feet, Israel shall not rise to kingdom glory until the church age is past. The church is the lesser light to rule the night. Israel rules in the full brightness of the sun, second coming of Christ. And that the crown uh, has 12 stars, obviously, as we said, this has to do with the tribes of Israel being the head of the nations. And one more place, one more place, come to Genesis chapter, I, I think we need to get to 37. Let me make sure. Genesis chapter 37. Joseph has a dream. And the Bible says in Genesis 37, verse number 9, he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me, to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. His father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? (laughs) As though he had any control over it. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come and bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Now here's the interpretation. It's right there. Joseph has a dream of the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. And his father, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Jacob the patriarch says, shall shall I, the sun, and thy mother, the moon, and thy brethren, the stars, bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Now, you couldn't find a cross-reference in the Bible that would link the sun, moon, and stars to Mary, Joseph's wife. And you couldn't find a verse in Scripture linking the sun, moon, and stars to the born-again believers who make up the New Testament church. But you can find from the mouth of the patriarch himself the belief, the understanding that the sun, moon, and stars are connected to the future of the nation of Israel. And that's exactly what you have in Revelation chapter 12 and verse number one. Okay, we'll stop there for today. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Thank you for inviting your friends to subscribe to our channel and hope you'll stay with us for the study of Revelation. Until next time, I'm Brother James. May the Lord richly bless you and good day.